Hi, this is Rob Nicholson. I wanted to show a brief installation demo for Cloud Pack for Integration version 2020.4.1. So to start off, I've got an OpenShift container platform um, 4.6 uh, cluster that I've just provisioned on AWS. Uh, I'm Googling uh, to get the uh, Cloud Pack for Integration documentation uh, and just click through into the documentation, select the appropriate version, 2020.4, and I go across to the installation instructions. And the first thing I need to do is I just need to add the IBM uh, software catalog into the cluster. There's a couple of snippets of, of YAML uh, to scrape and uh, just paste into the cluster. Uh, the plus, I'm, I'm uh, doing this as a um, as a uh, administrator. Uh, you'll notice I've got an error there because I'd actually already done this before I recorded the, the video. So that's the first one. Copy that and uh, scrape that one in. Uh, I hadn't done this one, so you'll see this one doesn't give an error. Um, right, so there we go. We've created essentially the IBM catalogs uh, in that cluster. So now all of the IBM software is, is available uh, to this cluster in the operator hub. So now we go into the operator hub and if we just search, um, well, actually we're gonna make a, a project, a new project or a namespace in which we're gonna install Cloud Pack for integration. Uh, I'm gonna just call it CP4i, give it a nice little description here. Uh, and then as soon as I've done that, I'm going to uh, search for CP4i to find the operators uh, for the Cloud Pack for integration. And you'll see I could choose here to install each component separately, but instead of doing that, I'm gonna pick the main top level Cloud Pack for integration operator. Uh, I'm gonna select the um, V1 EUS, um, uh, the EUS release, the um, um, extended user support release. And I'm gonna install that into this specific namespace, into the CP4i namespace. So um, that takes, uh, just a, a couple of minutes to install. What it's doing now is it's pulling the images from the IBM um, catalog uh, and installing them on, onto the cluster. Uh, I actually skipped forward here 90 seconds in the recording uh, just to make the video go, go faster. So 90 seconds later, we've, uh, we've installed the operators and I can now uh, view the operator and go and create an instance of it. So you'll see here, um, because I installed the top level operator, it's actually pulled all of the operators for Cloud Pack for integration uh, down. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an instance of the Cloud Pack for integration platform navigator, which is the top level uh, user interface. So I go into the uh, operator hub uh, instance create uh, menu. You can see I can, I can change a number of replicas and things here. I'm just gonna leave it at the default. Um, I have to uh, accept the, the license. Uh, up here, so just uh, click to say I've accepted the license, and then I can click on click create, and that's going to create the um, the platform navigator. Now, um, as part of creating the platform navigator, what it's going to do is it's actually going to pull in all of the IBM common services and install all of those. That takes about ten minutes. So ten minutes later, we come back and um, click through into Cloud Pack for integration, and now I need to log in. I'm going to log in as the administrator but how do I know the password? Aha, so I quickly switch back to the, um, to the documentation where it tells me how to get the admin password so I can log into the Cloud Pack for integration with the, with the um, you know, randomly created admin password. Basically, it's telling me that I can get that um, either by the command line or by the OpenShift console um, from a, a particular secret in IBM Common Services project. So that's what I'm gonna do now, to switch back to, uh, to OpenShift and get that secret. So I go find that secret and get the contents of it, copy the contents of it. Where is it? Platform of IDB credentials, that's it. Scroll down um, and I can just um, essentially take a copy of the admin password by clicking on the copy. Uh, I can go back to that login prompt and log in as administrator. And then, of course, you know, if, if this was for real, I, I would then, you know, probably change that password and, and set up LDAP and, 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 and yeah, configure all my users. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to log in as the administrator. And here, I'm, I'm already in the Cloud Pack for integration. 
Um, because I installed all the operators in a single go, that was a 10 minute kind of wait. I've now got all of the capabilities here. So I'm just going to very briefly show you uh, now, you know, creating instances of all of the all the um, operators. So in this case, we're going to create an instance of, of API Connect. And you'll notice that the, the, um, the, you know, the instance creation dialog has been made incredibly simple. All you need to really tell us is the name you want to give it, accept the license, uh, and then, uh, you know, potentially uh, select some some storage um, details. You know, how, what storage class you're going to deploy on, because we can't know that. But even then, we give you some some help, as as, as we'll see. So I've accepted the license. Um, the I'm going to accept the the default production uh, default profile, uh, and uh, I need to tell it the storage class. And you'll notice there that um, the the dialog actually showed me the storage classes that match. Um, the 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 the, you know, the the kind of storage, the flavor of storage class that API Connect needs. And you'll see this all the way through. Um, we're trying to give you as much help as possible. Now, obviously, we don't know the way your cluster is going to be configured, but we can recognize storage classes that meet. And you'll see here, I'm, I'm, I'm creating storage um, for the App Connect dashboard. In this case, I need an EFS storage. So again, it's selecting, it's telling me that's, that's, a, you know, that's a good choice for me. That's a, a compatible choice. So here I'm creating an instance of the App Connect dashboard. Again, I'm just uh, accepting all the defaults. Um, of course, for real, I might want to start changing some of those defaults, but uh, just for the purposes of, of this uh, demo, uh, I'm going to show you know, just with the defaults. And you'll notice as I'm configuring each of these um, uh, capabilities in the Cloud Pack, uh, I'm using uh, essentially kind of the templates. You, you'll notice uh, that there are you know, various different templates to, to choose from. Um, in this particular case, configuring App Connect Designer, I've chosen the template that, that has the AI-based mapping assist. Um, that was a, you know, a choice that I could, could have made. And that's kind of pre-filled out this uh, custom resource template for me with the values that, that I would, would select for, you know, to turn that capability on. So I'll go across now and create an operations dashboard. Um, yeah, you know, there's two potential templates here, a development or a production. Um, I've selected the de development. And you'll, you'll notice on those templates, it, it actually shows you the amount of CPU and memory uh, and, and licenses that are going to be needed for that. So um, and, and kind of you know, gives you, the, give you that, that piece of information. Uh, you'll see um, that we give uh, progress, um, uh, you know, pro progress uh, alerts as, as we go through. Um, if, there, if any you know, issues occur, maybe there isn't enough space or something on the cluster, uh, it will tell you. Now we're going across to create an, an asset repository. And again, I'm going to pick the development profile, a development template for that and create it. Um, again, you'll see you know, it needs storage and, and two different flavors of storage it needs. And again, we pre-select these are the, you know, the storage classes that are available on this particular cluster that meet, meet our needs. Um, so uh, I'm going to go across, I'm going to create an, an MQQ manager, um, a Kafka, actually I'm going to create a Kafka cluster first. Now with Kafka, there's um, six different profiles that we provide. Um, we're going to pick the, the smallest one for the purpose of this demo, which is a, you know, a, a light uh, profile without any security turned on. And, and the, you know, the, um, the, the, all of the custom resource details are all you know, pre-selected. Pre um, in this case, we don't need storage because we're just going to, it's going to be ephemeral. Um, so uh, we, we create that. And, oh, it's giving me an error because it's, I think it's telling me, oh, the, the, the name I selected was too long. So you'll, you'll see, you know, all the way through, there's, there's little kind of help, as we call them guardrails. You know, you do anything wrong, we, we'll tell you it's not quite right. You accept the license. Storage class isn't quite right. We'll tell you all the way through. I'm going to create a queue manager, accept the license. Um, uh, you know, select the particular style of, uh, of availability zone that we're going to use. Um, select the storage class that we're going to use for that. Um, yeah, are we going to use yeah, ephemeral storage or persistent claim storage? We're going to turn on tracing um, and then uh, the, the namespace that uh, the tracing's in, and we'll create that. And that's pretty much all of the capabilities deployed. Um, uh, oh, I, I could at this point deploy an Aspera high-speed transfer server, and it's pretty much exactly the same thing. I haven't actually got a license file for hand, so I'm not actually gonna deploy that, but, but the process would be exactly the same to deploy that 
um, you know, same, same basic principle, very, very consistent. You know, we've really focused on consistency uh, of how, how these things are configured and deployed. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that would be Aspera as well. It's telling me well, I don't have a license, so, uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to demonstrate, demonstrate that. Uh, and that's it. You know, we've pretty much got all of the software onto the cluster. We've got the operators onto the cluster um, and uh, we've configured the Cloud Factor Integration Navigator. And now we've you know, essentially created um, instances of all of the capabilities. Now, obviously, in a, in a real environment, you, you almost certainly would not require one instance of each capability. Um, that, that's a pretty bizarre integration project. Um, your integration projects will will require, you know, perhaps multiple instances. Who knows? Maybe you need multiple queue managers, uh, Kafka, and API Connect, and, 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 and you obviously would configure your particular deployment exactly the way that you want it to, to be configured. And you probably wouldn't select the defaults and the smallest, simplest option for every, every, uh, every one of the capabilities. You might, of course, want to deploy using command line, using, you know, continuous integration, uh, and we can we can support that too. Every one of these you know, configurations, all it's doing is it's creating you a YAML file um, to create the custom resource that the operator will then you know, act upon and stand up. So you know, all this is, is is a fancy UI on top of the basic capabilities that are provided by operators uh, and by OpenShift, um, and we give you the ability to 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 to, to, to grab that YAML and to um, to use that to, to stand it up via the command line. So we, we actually asked for you know, a lot of work to be done, all of these things to be stood up in parallel. So it does take you know, some time for, for the, for the, um, for the um, operators to deploy all of the resources out onto the cluster, but you'll see they gradually come, come ready. Um, API Connect is, is still going at this point. Um, and then you know, once we've got those deployed, as soon as they come ready, you can start to interact with them via the, um, the UI. Uh, we can start to you know, click into, in this case, App, Kit, App Connect Enterprise Designer, and we can create event-driven flows. That's a new capability, by the way. Event-driven flows is new in the in the 2020 4.1 release. Um, so at the moment, we can create event-driven flows just to, that are triggered by just a couple of uh, event connectors. But as we move forwards, all of the rest of the event connectors that we've got for actions, you know, they'll start to appear. Um, you can see the navigation so we can move around between the different capabilities. So we can jump across into MQ and see the UI for MQ. Uh, so that's just starting and there it is. So it gives you the ability to uh, configure MQ, um, you know, set up your queues um, and understand yeah, what's going on. Obviously, this has just been deployed and there aren't any queues at the moment. And it's telling us there, uh, you know, there are. Um, yeah, no, no user defined queues. There's a bunch of obviously system queues there, um, which have got a new more normal queue there. So that's it really. Um, a very, very quick, quick uh, run through of the process to uh, configure, uh, to you know, stand up um, all of the capabilities in integration in the Cloud Pack for integration using operators on our extended user support release, our EUS release um, 2020.4.1. Uh,